Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning. Good morning, viewers. It is 7.12 a.m. And welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show, coming to you here live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. Yes, this is our paradise, indeed. Uh, viewers, in this segment, we are chatting H-O-M-E, home, for many, a critical, critical asset. For many, just that space where I'm able to rock back and be myself. But we're speaking about it this morning in the context of the home ownership made equal, as we speak with the Division of Settlement and this morning on set with us is Assemblyman Ian Flood, Secretary for the Division of Settlements, Public Utilities and Rural Development. And we also have on with us Jimmy Sylvester. And Jimmy is the Social Intervention Officer. So you know when Secretary come here loaded plus. It's big things you're going to do here this morning. Good morning and welcome to you all. Good morning, good morning Julian. Good morning, good morning to your viewing public. Good, good morning to the people of Miss Nolan Royal, my electoral district, and the wider world. All right. So we're diving straight on into it, uh, Secretary, in terms of setting the tone. Um, some weeks back, uh, we, uh, we would have had the opportunity to speak in relation to uh, what started off as that uh, investigative type tour and initiative heading on out uh, to Jamaica, seeing what's happening on the outside uh, with the intents to make a difference in the Tobago space. In some instances, you and your division and your colleagues would have been highly criticized, saying it's just another trip. Okay. Um, here it is, uh, we are seeing and getting some details in relation to the launch of this initiative. And I want you to make the connection with what we now see as the Home Ownership Made Equal initiative as we speak on the broader sense before we delve into the details. Is. Well, Julian, before I go for that, I must say good morning to my um, employees in Jamaica because I do have a staff in Jamaica. <laughs> we are so closely knit. To this. But if, um, Jamaican people have showed us the way. I mean, our trip, as you said, the minority leader said we were on a picnic trip. But if this was a picnic, I love the fruits that would bear from the, our picnic. And I would want to let him know that a picnic table will be in his constituency very soon. Mm -hmm. So he could bring the blankets. <laughs> But, Just, uh -huh, go ahead. but um, the trip really brought, brought fruit. I mean, we, we had our own housing initiative here and we saw it fit to see what Jamaica is doing because they are data driven. I mean, anything they do, they have, they have the data for it. I mean, they are out there, they have the policies in place. So we think that was a fitting place to go and see, observe on our two trips and we were able to amend or tweak our, our policy and to implement this new housing initiative which I said, because the Jamaica, when they started, they told us the first house came in in like 65 to 90 days. We were able to deliver a house in 21 days. And tell us a little bit more about this. We saw this story that would have been presented, uh, making waves across the media in terms of reaching out uh, to that mother and son in response um, as what some would describe as the pilot. And then, of course, you know, your very firm commitment of promises, more to come. Yes. All right. Tell us about that initiative specifically. Well, Miss Bruce came to my office on the 5th of April 2022. And after hearing her plight, I told her in no uncertain terms that it stops here because she had been trying to get a home since 2016. She was afforded a past of land in Mason Hall that I think was precipitous. And for someone who was visually impaired, I think it was insensitive to offer a past of land. Even the op excavator operator who was supposed to clear the land told her that it's impossible to put a house there. So when she came, I told her, we're going to do, we're going to make sure provide a home for her. And that we did. She didn't know she was going to expect get that home until that morning when she heard it. Uh, one of the announcers saying that, okay, we're going to hand over this house. So I kept it a secret. I spoke to our son Giovanni in the United States and told him what we were going to do. So he was on the live. But that's a commitment we have for not only Miss Bruce, but all Tobagonians. And you're going to see many more to come starting from today. So, Jimmy, I want you to tell us here, from, from where you sit, um, and you know, we have, we have lived through the times where people taught um, social intervention and social work was only something that you would see under social services. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, from where you sit, the importance of an initiative like this and the connection in terms of as a social officer based on your training and your background. Good morning, Tobago again. Now, um, what we need to understand is basic needs still remains food, shelter, and clothing. And what we fail to realize is a home provides dignity. It provides person to have that sense of security and that sense of self-worth. 
And the social workers or the social intervention officers at settlements would provide that assessment of where the need is. Many persons want something, but they don't need it. And that's a difference. There's a difference between a want and a need. A need is something that you just cannot live without. And through this initiative, we are able to grant person their needs and help them to live a more dignified life in the Tobago space. Because we all know many times person brand the, the division and say you're giving homes to people who want it and to persons who don't need it. And this initiative would really allow us to meet the persons at the point of their need. So um, when we did this initiative, and if you hear, heard Miss Bruce respond, she said, the blind finally has a voice. And that is something that stood out to us, meaning that we are making impact where it is needed. Now, it's clear that some changes have been made to the policy. Um, where it is, there would have been distributions in the past, and you put down your name on a list. I want you to make the comparison between those persons who may have put down their names on a list for a number of years and what is now this uh, new initiative being led off in terms of um, the uh, home program. Uh um, the social housing is, um, we're going to go out and look at the persons who are really in need, as Ms. Sylvester said. Those households that are in dilapidated states, the indigent. But in the housing policy that would be changing the division after approval from the um, Executive Council, is that we have some persons who call my phone, they meet me, you know, you go out and someone is in your ass telling you, you know, they have applied 20 years now. So the policy will be changed by, by, as instructed by the Chief Secretary and Executive Council, that persons who have been enlisted for 20 years, they're going to have a special category for those persons only. Persons with 10 years, they're going to have a special category from that. So it's a fair, open, transparent process. So we don't want everybody who some, because last time some, when the draw was made for Riseland, some persons applied the same week and the name were called in the draw. And some persons were upset saying that they have applied 20 years, so we're going to have a special category for those persons so that a pool will be there for a certain percentage for them. So just so that I'm clear, that program is separate from the, the Home Ownership social... Made Equal program? Yes. yes. yes okay. So one caters, so as you're mentioning, those draws will now cater to the different groupings based yes. on how long you've been yes. there. Mm -hmm. So you're sure to know if I in the 20-year batch, That's at least some of the houses yes, going to go, go, go to that grouping. If I in the 10-year batch, some are going to go there. Yeah. And I don't want to get vexed with only those no. who are lucky from the first year batch. <laughs> no, no, no. Because why, we just want to be happy for luck when we receive it. Yes, yes, yes. yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> All right. But well, as we delve in a little further, I want you to give some insight into the target groups associated. Um, because in the past, um, yes, there was a, a broad category associated with applying for housing. Mm -hmm. But then the challenges seem to have occurred when you get to the housing development and you say, hey, Jimmy and Ian get one boy. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the, cat, the target group would be, for the social housing program, would be the differently abled, the persons, single mothers, those that are the low income of life. So you have some CPAP and some URP workers. You also have the persons who um, fall prey to the disaster and, and flood and fires. You know sometimes that they just really, this happened and you really don't have a response. You also have the elderly because we know um, some persons live their life, they worked all their lives, and they cannot afford a home. And at pension, $3,000 per month, and you know what rent is like in Tobago, you just cannot afford to, right? Um, with that being said, I wanted to be clear that the program is not free per se, but it would also be done via an assessment. So persons who can pay would would pay for um, not necessarily a high mortgage, but they would provide some kind of finance because we know money value is attached to where your, where your cash is. Secretary, yeah. following off of um, Jimmy's point there, we know it is that the THE and its own is not able to afford um, the delivery. Tell us about the, the stakeholders um, you know, and the kind of partnership efforts to be able to make this happen and to, to deliver these homes. Well, to tell you, Julian, is that we have had conversation with um, the credit unions sometime last year, starting to have a discussion about this initiative, even before we went to Jamaica. And what is mind-boggling or heart-rending is that this institution have not bought into the process. So we know that we have to foot it on our own. Eventually, I know that they have seen the success in it, that they will probably come on board. But we have to try to produce these houses that they are low-cost housing. And it's for those people who are most in need.
So we are hoping that they or the banking industry get, in, get involved. But if not, as Mr. Sylvester said, we're going to go after this target group and then try to provide homes for these persons. Tell us about the administration of um, this uh, social program in terms of its delivery, reaching persons, uh, income brackets, and these things that persons may wonder about as part of the, the qualifying factors, if indeed I fall into one of the relevant target areas. Well, the income bracket, first thing, the ceiling is 7,500, right? And so we'll be catering really for those who are at the lower end of the ceiling, right? And then you have um, persons who who unemployed because the differently abled would be able would be getting a disability grant and the elderly would be getting pension and that kind of thing. The process is you have to go through your area representatives. And the reason for that is that we don't want that persons come to the division and say, you know, I need a house because of the situation that they have, right? But your area representatives should know what is happening in, your, in their constituencies. And because of that, they would be able to give that sense of, yes, this person is really living in this situation and they, they really need the home. Added to that, we also have the part of where the community leader or community member would have to give recommendation as well to um, state that this case is really something that is warranted. Because at the end of the day, we said home is security. So you can't just come in and say, well, you want a home and this is what it is. Or you're living in the hospital and you want a house. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting indeed. Yeah. Uh, Secretary, I wanted to tie in a little bit more. Let's speak to the, the units itself. Um, what's, what's the hope to make available um, to persons in terms of it's going to be one bedroom units where it is I still have to be looking for something down the road. I might have the opportunity in better times to expand. Tell us a little bit about these, these units because you know some people believe if it come in like this, mm. why not have nothing too good to fight up with? Yeah. No, no, no. Um, we're good doing one, two, and three bedroom units, but we go out and do the assessment, and then we have the dimensions. We have we're actually looking for two quotes from two other service providers so that we can actually get this program going, because as you know, we were mandated by the Chief Secretary to complete at least 20 before the ending of June, because this model is made out of light gauge steel, so it's aluminum frame and gypsum walls, and I mean, we could have it done within the time. So. We are really, really trying to deliver to the people who are most in need, Julian. That is the key. And tell us, will this be in set areas as has happened previously? No, or you it's not. We tell are, us a today, we are, as you see, we are just we are going out in the field today. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through the length of Britain Tobago because we have started Saturday. We were out to a team assessing some homes, and we are hoping to go through from Plymouth to Charlottesville today, come around to Castara, so we could have those 20 homes assessed and have the, get the ball rolling as soon as possible. What has your experience been being on the ground? Because from what I, uh, I see and from what I know um, in relation to you, you don't seem to be there just for the distribution. No. You you dare every every step of the way, even though it means more demands on you, because people are happy to see why it is. They say, let me ask him for what going on with the application. Tell us how that experience has been for you in terms well, I, of as part of this initiative. I think, and as, I think as secretary, I have to be hands on with what is, uh, what is going on on the ground. I'm not the kind of person who likes to stay in the office and get report comes to me. I like to be especially helping those who are in most in need because you know we have a campaign on the fact of giving Tobigonians a hand up, not a handout. Mm -hmm. So that improving the lives of Tobigonians. So I want the first hand knowledge so I could prioritize this person, this person is in need because what we are seeing out there, Julian, I mean, a report could not paint a picture of what some person, the conditions some persons out there living in. Mm -hmm. So we have to be out there to see, get an assessment and know prioritize because we have a person before I left for Jamaica, they said that in the country area, who was living in a toilet. And this day is 2023. And you know what was really sad about that distribution on Thursday, on last Friday? The Milford Court development is 47 years old this year, 1976. And I, as secretary, a leader of the, the division, commanded a team to go through the development. And we found 10 parcels of land inside there yet to be distributed. Today, it's 47 years later. And that goes for all the de developments in Tobago. There's still 40, 36 um, plots in Castara. There's still 19 in Blemin. There's, 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 there's plots of lands all over to be given out. But shockingly, there are units in Adventure. 
to be given out. But one thing to be good and could be sure of. Every parcel of land, every unit will be given out by the secretary and my assistant secretary. Everyone. All right, and I'm sure that's good news to hear for persons looking on and saying, well, look how long I'm asking about something down in that area. All right, as we prepare to wrap this morning's uh, interview, Jimmy, any key areas you would want to highlight before we close? I would really like to thank the Jamaicans, the Ministry of um, Housing, that they were open to us. Mm -hmm. They really assisted us and showed us the model. And any assistance that we want or, or ask stuff, they were willing to share even when we got back, you know, and we really want to thank them. We really want to thank the managing director at NHT, which was Mr. Miller, and the social development team led by Ms. Wendy Jo Williams. Yes. We really want to thank them because they have been with us every step of the way, and we really, really want to thank them for their assistance. We, we don't know everything, and knowledge sharing is important. Networking is important, and we thank them so much for their assistance in, in us being able to deliver this. We are so really um, thankful to the chief because he's, he gave the secretary a mandate on April 4th last year, 2022, and it's one of the mandates, the points in the mandate was to deliver low-cost housing. And really and truly, Julian, we, we thought we were delivering low-cost housing because that's been what we were there for. Um, and now that we are really doing it, we realize that here yeah, what there's a, a, a sect in society that really needs this aspect. And to be honest, we're asking you, when we come to your communities or when we come to your area and you realize that someone is building, please lend a hand. Because at the end of the day, today, you may have a roof over your head, but you don't know what tomorrow holds. Welfare doesn't have a face. So let's help each other build. All right. And Secretary, in closing, uh, just give us a little insight and a sneak peek um, into that time ahead. I know so far you spoke up to June <laughs> with, your, with, with your timeline and commitment, but those projections are, and the deliveries that you hope to make broadly in your division um, within this too. Yes, we do. And um, beside the social housing, we are hoping to start giving out the contract for the first housing development at Chevron Road, which will be 588 units thus far. We're also looking at Adventure in Plymouth. We're looking at 150 units. And we were mandated that Adelphi and Mason will be lands only. So you're going to put in the infrastructure. So and also in Colon, we're going to do that. But going back to the housing, our housing units, our three bedroom will be two bathroom. Because COVID has taught us if we have to isolate at home, we cannot have one bathroom in the home. And the Jamaican um, government, they were receptive to this idea because they weren't thinking along this line. So the knowledge sharing really works out. So. We are looking to build out these one, two, and three bedrooms. As I said, we're going to go out today, assess these persons, and start as quickly as possible. But I'm, I'm calling and pleading to the persons, especially my nurses, police officers, fire officers, please be pre-qualified, because as very soon as these units constructed, we're going to give them out in phases. So if the first set of batches in Chauvin is ready by January, we'll be handing them out. We're not holding anything for election. We are handing out as we construct. And we have to start a have conversations with our public because it's the first time on the landscape that we've been going to six-story buildings. So that kind of living, you have to have conversations, they have persons understand the type of living. So I hope that everyone gets on board and do the right thing, get pre-qualified. Once you're pre-qualified and you're on the system, there's a possibility of you getting on the draw. All right, and you know, I always have to make a plug for my young persons. Yes. So in the same way, you have the categories with the 30 year, 20 year, and yes. 10 year. Yes. There needs there's to be a young category for young, 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 young There's a category yeah. for young professionals. Good. So there's a category for everyone. So when we make the changes, it will be rat ratified by the executive council and approved, and we're going we're gonna to make it known to the public. But before I go, Julian, I'd like to give you one of our keychains, our home keychain. <laughs> Yes, it was, yes. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me make sure the viewers, the viewers can see it very quickly. And they're all seeing the... I've got to take it out of the pocket before they start shouting at me. Yes, so you're getting an opportunity to see it here in the mix this morning. And make it sure was I get designed, it. Ah, yes. designed by a Tobago young person, Mr. Christopher Alfred. Very so nice. So we thank him for that. And we also want persons to know, as they're on that point of young professionals and stuff in... in once the policy has been uh, um, approved by Executive Council, the subventions and the subsidies for home ownership would no longer be blanket. So you would not have a person 
that is senior playing the same amount, um, getting the same subsidy as a person that is young, because you know a young person will be able to qualify for a better mortgage compared to somebody that is senior. So it is something that would be in the making as well. Correct. And as my grandmother would say, it's only my pension I work in with. But you have opportunities Before I go, I would like to thank EJ Engineering who constructed that home free of cost. They donated that, that, and I must say, we thank them from the bottom of our heart. So we're looking forward to go ahead and start constructing these homes as soon as possible so we could meet our mandate of 20 houses by the ending of June because they have perfected the skill and they said uh, they told me that they could probably do one under 21 days. Excellent. Uh, and uh, certainly that's what we're looking to hear um, here in Tobago. Thank you very much, yeah, Assemblyman yeah. Ian Pollard, joining us here on set, Secretary with Responsibility for the Division of Settlement, Public Utilities and Rural Development, and Social Intervention Officer Jimmy Sylvester. So folks, feel free to connect with them. The main office is located in Crown Point, but I want to go as far as to say, anywhere you see them in Tobago, stop them. <laughs> Flag them down so you could interact and get the required information that you need as we speak. And I know uh, hearing this interview this morning, um, many have a keen interest because we know that the list and, and, and the waiting has happened so, so much for the simple reason that the demand uh, always outweighs okay, what supply. is available. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly where the opportunity exists and there are plots available, I know that persons would be looking forward to hearing of the distribution. So we're holding Secretary uh, to that commitment mm -hmm. and we will be doing our follow-up to ensure yes. that really and truly those available plots are distributed so we know as far and wide as possible persons continue to benefit. Thank you so much for joining us here on set this morning at the Tobago Updates Morning Show. And up next we have uh, Marisha... Edwards Thomas, all right, representing DUTEC as we speak, ICT in our schools, Division of Education, Research and Technology. Those of you connecting with us online, those of you listening in on the radio, and to each and every one of you, even on the television, we want to remind all of you, particularly those of you online, that this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live.